Yo, Jason Eubanks and HIHBowling.com. Hashtag hit it harder. The content doesn't stop. We're on quarantine and chill right now. You know why. We can't talk about it. But look, um, first things first, the winner of the 7K giveaway for the hit it harder jersey is... So if that is you, contact me and we'll get you in a hit it harder jersey. If you didn't win, you can still check out the website, hihbowling.com. Check out various t-shirts or just pick up a dice sub straight from the site. So with everything, we're on lockdown and whatnot, but hey, things gotta keep going, right? So this is the time to take care of some of those projects you have laying around the house. And one of those things is bowling ball storage. Where do you store your bowling balls? How do you store your bowling balls? Now, today we're gonna to show you how to make a bowling ball rack or shelf, however you wanna display case, you know, however you wanna label it. Um, yeah, I'm gonna step-by-step process. Now, my specialty is metalwork, like steel fabrication, welding, stuff like that. I'm kind of limited on my woodworking stuff, but um, we're gonna get the job done. So I have a combination of a, maybe a jigsaw and a table saw that we're gonna turn this wood into a bowling ball shelf. First thing you're gonna do, I think this is 11 30 second plywood. Now it may seem kind of thin, but I have a solution for that. I'm trying to make this as light and economic as possible for you. I think total amount is about 28 bucks just for the wood. Um, so yeah, step by, um, I made a few of these a few years ago, but I never wrote down the plans. It was kind of like on the fly. So you're going to make it as I make it, make adjustments. And at the end of the video, we'll have a functioning, um, you know, functioning ball storage. And we'll have some exact dimensions. You can make one of these at home. All right. Stay tuned. Okay. So first step is we had the four by eight sheet of plywood. It was ripped in half. So what I'm gonna do, I have a four by four eight sheet that I'm working with. I'm gonna cut four pieces at 11 and a half by whatever the length is and we'll fine tune that uh, in the next couple of steps. So four pieces out of your four by four at 11 and a half. These are gonna be your shelves. So now we have our shelves cut. 11 and a half by about 47 and three quarters. Had to allow for the thickness of the blade at the hardware store. So that's what this came up to be. Um, so you're gonna also for the shelf, and that's for the shelves. You're also gonna need some one by two. And I'll show you what to do with these in a second. But we're gonna go over to the other four by four sheet and we're gonna rip those down to our dimensions. Okay, so now we're gonna take our other piece of four by four and we're gonna cut uh, two pieces at uh, 16 inches. One, two, and we'll have an extra piece left over. So let's get these cut. For the most part, we have everything we need to put this thing together. We have our shelves here, and we have three pieces that are about 16 inches. So these pieces are gonna be your sides. So the final product is gonna be about 16 inches wide and about four feet tall. Okay, so, so now you're gonna take uh, your shelves, your four shelves, and you're gonna prep and mark the holes. So the, what the math I came up with, starting from left to right or whichever way you go, First measurement, five and a quarter, okay? Off of that other measurement, from the other side, come in five and a quarter as well, okay? Off of that five and a quarter, you can go 
nine and a quarter, nine and a quarter, and one more time at nine and a quarter. And if you measure that, you got nine and a quarter as well, give or take like a 16. So you have one, two, three, four, five marks here, okay? Okay, this is part of the build that absolutely sucks. Now, you have two different options here. If you do not have a drill, those same center marks you can get, you're gonna need about 20 of these bowling ball cups. Center them up, center them up and you can glue them down right there. That's your dimensions there. Or, if you have access to a drill, and even better, if you have access to a router, you can take it a little bit further. So, with the drill, uh, this is a three inch hole saw. Drill the holes. Okay, this is how they come out drilled. Okay, if you have a router, you can take it a step further and round these corners off or whatnot. You can kind of see right here. Make sure your router is set right, not too deep, so you don't mess anything up. But this will be the bottom shelf, nobody will see it. Okay, so prep your four shelves however you want them to be, whether you use a drill or if you glue on ball cups, and then I'll take you to the next step. No matter which way you choose to make your holes, because we went with a lighter, uh, thinner wood to make this a little bit lighter, these shelves are gonna be a little bit on the flimsy side, right? As you can see, you can kind of see, see the flex and the bounce in that. We don't want that, okay? So, on this next step, we're going to take the uh, one by twos here, and we're going to reinforce the bottom of the shelf. Okay, so to reinforce our shelf here, we're going to cut two of these uh, one by twos at approximately about 46 inches. Reason being because when I the way I'm going to attach you need that space, so I kind of want to make sure it's almost full length. So, those one by twos you just cut, we're going to take the bottom half of your shelf. So whatever side looks the best, that'll be your top. This one, you know, bam, you got all these pit marks and knots in it so this will be the bottom okay we're gonna put one of these on each side of the holes make sure you leave yourself about three quarters of an inch leave yourself three quarters of an inch from the top and then on the bottom because of how we're going to secure it so like i said i have a nail gun that's what i'm going to use you can use drywall screws, whatever you use, use wood glue, and that'll keep everything solid. So I'm gonna secure these to the bottom so here. I'm gonna apply tons of wood glue. You can never have too much wood glue. So what do they call Walter Ray? Walter Ray is, uh, what is he called, dead eye? Well, in the construction field, they call me eagle eye. So I don't even measure out. Just make sure, say leave yourself three quarters, get it as close as to the holes as you can, okay? So I'll probably have about half an inch between the hole and the stud here. So I'm going to come from the bottom. See this is that eagle eye. This is eagle eye right here, certified eagle eye. Bam. Okay, that's one. Let's do the other half, and that's just to hold it. Don't go, don't go, don't kill me in the comments yet. So I'm gonna fill these in, then we're gonna give it that strength test again. Hold on. Okay, now we're back over here for our strength test. Balls are just sitting here for placement. Um, 
put them back in the middle three again like we did on the last one. And you can see the difference. So you can see reinforcement not going anywhere. So go ahead and make the other three shells and then we'll uh, get back to it. While we have the shelves, the glue drying, we're going to take uh, one of the 16 inch pieces, right? Because we have three pieces at 16 inches by 48 roughly. So, if you cut them all at 16, you know, one's probably be like a hair shorter because of the thickness of the blade and the width of the original wood that you started at. So we're going to take one of these and just cut it in half, all right? Okay, so this is what our shelves are going to mount to. We're going to use another piece of this, one by two. We're going to make these, we're going to make uh, eight pieces at 10 inches. Okay, for our next part, we're going to work on the shelf. So I kind of have an idea how I want to put it together and the distances that I want. So what I decided to do was uh, figure out what your, your top and your bottom is and your left and your right. So starting here, I don't know if you can, yeah, you can see me, okay. So from the bottom up three inches that make a mark there uh, so three inches to start okay then we're going to go up off of that three inch line we're going to go up 11 and a half inches So make another line. Yeah. Like I said, you can go as deep as you want into these. It's all up to you. So we're going to go up another 11 and a half inches off of that line. And up another 11 and a half inches off of that line. So, to double check, it's always better to pull your measurements. That way you can get the same thing all the way across. 3, 14, and 9 16, 26 and a quarter and 37 and three quarters. So do that same thing. Or you can put a level on it. You know what I mean? 26, I knew this line was a little off. 26 and a quarter, I want that up here. And then uh, 37 and three quarters, 37. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I knew I was tripping. That line was about a quarter inch off. Okay? So, those same pieces, we had to cut it 10 inches. Those lines are going to represent the bottom of the, the, the wood there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to offset this. I'm going to cheat it this way. Uh, let's go an inch and an eighth. So an inch and an eighth, this will be the back, this will be the front. Reason I'm doing that is, that way all the weight is, is not in the center. So if you have little kids, they can't climb and tilt it. It'll take more for this distance over this distance. You know what I mean? So this is going to be your back portion of the wall. So an inch and an eighth from here to there, all the way down. So I'm going to get these mounted. Same thing, uh, nail gun, screw gun, whatnot. Just like that. Right. Okay, now that we have everything secured, depending on how you start, uh, your three inches, remember we said three inches from the bottom. So this is gonna be your bottom shelf right here. This is the back. So this will make this the left side of your shelf here. So you're gonna get your other piece, your other 16 inch piece. Determine which side you wanna show. So this would be the inside. Yeah, so draw on the inside. Your finished side would be this side. Then you're gonna mirror these measurements over to here. So that way they match up like that. So that's your bottom. Start there, measure up, copy these. Quick tip, if you're ever afraid of your cuts, um, or you're, you don't like the way you know your local hardware store cut them, measure off your factory edge. One edge is gonna come from the factory perfect, you know what I mean? So use those measurements to your, use that, that edge to your advantage. That way everything is true. So I'm just uh, measuring these lines over from here. Like I said, it's really not that hard to do. You can almost just have them cut the whole thing. You know, you can have them cut the whole thing in the store, save you some time at the, at the house. Um, so, same thing, get your line. If you have a straight edge, use it. I'm using this block of wood. Like I said, I'm certified Eagle Eye. Certified Eagle Eye. <laughs> um, yeah. There. Okay. Then your same inch in a sixteenth back set coming this way. So inch and a sixteenth. Did I say inch and a sixth? I think I said an inch and an eighth. Inch and eighth, I'm sorry. Or just measure it. Inch and an eighth, the back set. Like I said, one of these is gonna be a clean cut. You can use that side to your advantage. 
this is your crucial part because these two are going to talk to each other and their shelves are going to sit on them. Alright, so I got these. So it's going to look something like that. Inch and eighth there. That's corner. Corner. Just like that. Okay. Right. Now that you got all your sides together, fun part, the assembly. So this is going to be the bottom shelf. Remember your three inches. Any shelf if you measured it right. Okay. Put glue. Um, yeah. So here. Just about up to there. Just put glue on your stands there. And because I'm too lazy to go get my clamps and I don't have any help, I'm gonna make this a little bit harder on myself. So just flip it up here, here, and then screw it together like you would. Now, the back of your shelf is gonna line up with that inch and an eighth uh, back set I had you set, right? So, inch and an eighth right there, boom. Hit it. Push that in right there. There. And fill that in. Alright? Once again, like I said, once I have this part up, it's smooth sailing. Here's your bottom, three inches. Don't forget to put your glue. Across the top of your uh, one by two, and when you put your one by twos, you want the one inch uh, width. Going down. So you want the surface area of the two inch, like that. Okay. So you have an inch on each side to set your shelf and two inches on each side to get your screws in. So, that's set. Push that up against here. Raise that up so I can feel where that uh, my back set is because I'm setting it flush right on the edge right there. Make sure it's pushed all the way in. Feel it, I'm straight where I want it. Bam, one to hold it, push in. Okay, all right, that's pretty much that. So I'm gonna stand this up and get the rest of the shelves in real quick. This piece here, the inch and an eighth, is going to be the inside or the furthest line this way. So that way when you put your backing material, that's screwed there and that's flush now. Just like that. So what I have to do is your eight inch pieces. I forgot because I put the shelves on. This was a true 48 inch piece, so I had to take about 
a quarter of an inch off of here. So now it'll fit right in between and lock us in the square. So let me reverse the angle, screw this in. Be right back. Yeah. 